Tech Revision with Mrs. Swanee Pooh. <laughs> Hi everyone. This is a video all about the section in the revision guide uh, about biodegradable polymers. So this covers a range of more sustainable alternatives to um, crude oil based polymers um, and comes up a lot in the exam so um, I would recommend that you pay quite close attention to this and try and remember a couple of them. Some of them are quite tricky to remember but um, others for example uh, potato pack, cornstarch polymers, lact uh, lactide, they are I think relatively easy to remember and would be great things to put into any question that asks you about the sustainability of uh, polymers um, because they are much more sustainable alternatives. So uh, there is a YouTube video at the bottom there. Um, you can type that in, you can have a look at that if you want to, but I'm going to go through the main uh, key bits. These are the list of biodegradable polymers that you need to know about. But firstly, uh, we need to talk about what is meant by a biodegradable polymer. So firstly, there are um, two categories of um, more sustainable polymers. And there, it, this can be a little bit confusing because there's biodegradable polymers and there's biopolymers. So just have a think to yourself for a moment. What do you think the difference is? Um, maybe pause and make a few notes about what you think the difference is between the two, because there is um, a big difference. So the difference is that biodegradable polymers are actually still made from um, finite resources. Uh, so from crude oil, um, still uses fractional distillation, still uses, um, you know, a finite resource in crude oil that is running out. Um, but the way that they make it biodegradable is they, um, they put something into it called an additive that makes it degrade and break down more quickly than traditional polymers. So this is quite cheeky by um, companies. They will say that their polymers are biodegradable. Um, but actually, and that makes the consumer think, oh, it's much more environmentally friendly. Yes, in a way, it's going to biodegrade and break down, but it is still coming from an unsustainable source. So biodegradable polymers still come from crude oil, but they have things added to them to make them break down more quickly um, when they are disposed of. And then we have biopolymers. So biopolymers come from renewable sources. They come from natural materials. So you've got natural and synthetic. So natural biopolymers come straight from things like cellulose, which is plants, from starchy vegetables like potatoes, and polysaccharides, which are basically the, the chemicals within plants that give it the sort of stiffness to the, to the stems of plants. So these are all from natural uh, materials that are non-finite, renewable, can be grown, and it's not from crude oil. Um, synthetic biopolymers are still from renewable resources, but they are chemically engineered um, to, to, to break down uh, quicker. So rather than being something natural that will just be eaten by bugs in the, in the soil, for example, these are chemically engineered to break down uh, more quickly, but they are still from renewable resources. So uh, a really good example is if you have seen the latest PG Tips advert, it says that the, the tea bag casing is biodegradable, but at the bottom as a sort of like a, it has like a star and it says it still comes from um, oil based plastics. So they've had to be really careful there because um, the consumer can sometimes get confused because they think they are getting something that is much more environmentally friendly when actually it's still coming from a crude oil uh, source. So make sure you're happy with the difference between the two. Right, what we're going to do now is talk through each of the different types of uh, biopolymers, um, uh, natural biopolymers and synthetic biopolymers. So the first one being cornstarch polymers. Um, these tend to be made from things like high starch vegetables, so things like corn, potatoes um, and maize. So you can also get something called potato pack, which is also used for 
um, the same kind of applications. And it, this is really useful for uh, one use disposable uh, plastic. So, for example, things like packaging, straws, disposable cutlery, takeaway food containers. Um, so imagine you're at a festival or something and you go to uh, get some food and rather than it coming in a uh, polystyrene uh, container, it's going to come in something like this, a cornstarch polymer that when it's disposed of will just naturally break down, naturally biodegrade and it's not going to go into landfill um, or cause any dangerous chemicals to leach uh, out into the environment. So as we spoke about as well, there is potato pack. This is made from potato starch. And I did show you a video about this ages ago, um, or you may have seen a video that I've shown you in class, which is about how um, this, they actually use a lot of the potatoes that are wasted um, through just not being used or not being good enough to uh, sell uh, for use as a natural potato. They use those potatoes to make um, potato packs. So single use food items, uh, bowls, cutlery, food trays. So these things will break down quite quickly, but because they're supposed to be used for one use, um, you know, takeaway food, all that sort of stuff, um, it's perfect because even if it is left on the floor, left in, um, you know, it's going to break down and it's not going to cause uh, much pollution in the environment. Um, this one is um, another really good one. It's called um, it's called Biopol. Um, it's not usually a uh, plastic by itself, um, but it's an additive. So as we spoke about biodegradable polymers at the beginning of this uh, video, um, this is the additive that is added into thermoplastics. So it says usually 1% is added to thermoplastics and <clears throat> this bacteria helps to promote uh, degradation. So it helps to, helps to um, basically encourage those thermoplastics to break down. And there's a picture there at the bottom where you can see a thermoplastic bottle that um, over a certain amount of time you can see that it's broken down. Now, what's important to remember is that the thermoplastics will still not fully disappear. They could turn into microplastics, which are also very damaging to the environment. So, yes, this does help the plastic to break down, but um, those plastic uh, particles may still uh, be in the environment. Um, this one is called PHA. Um, it's, it is an interesting one. It, I mean, I mean, I can't even say that polyhydro polyhydroxyalkanate. There we go. It's made from bacteria grown in cultures. The important thing about this is it's fully compostable. Um, it's going to, you know, be easy to dispose of. It's often used in medical applications for slow release of, uh, you know, slow release medic uh, medication patches, screws and bone plates because it's not going to have any chemicals in it that are going to cause any issues to the body. It's all completely natural. Um, tricky one to remember that one, um, but it, it's one that's on the specification that you just need to have an awareness of. So PHA is a natural biopolymer, which is fully compostable. Now we're going to talk about um, synthetic biopolymers. And one of the most common ones and ones that we you all used, I'm sure, when you've asked for anything to be 3D printed is this PLA. So it's made from um, sugar um, or corn um, and it is synthetic. So it's so it's from a natural source, but it is um, chemically engineered um, to produce something called polylactic acid um, that can then be turned into uh, a polymer that reacts very much like a thermoplastic, uh, like a traditional thermoplastic. And PLA is quite often used in packaging, in single use bottles, disposable nappies and 3D printing. <clears throat> it is biodegradable. Uh, it is compostable. <coughs> but it it's it's not as good as you kind of want it to be. When I started using PLA for 3D printing, I wanted it 
to be that you could put it in your garden waste and it would break down. Unfortunately, you have to give it to a, um, a composting, uh, an industrial composter, uh, because it needs relatively high temperatures and certain chemicals to be present in the soil for it to break down. So there's still massive benefits to it. It's not coming from crude oil. It's not a finite resource, but it doesn't break down as easily as some uh, manufacturers would like you to believe. So polylactic acid, PLA, used for um, a wide range of applications, 3D printing. Um, so that's kind of one of the key ones you need to remember for synthetic biopolymers. Lactide. This one came up in an exam um, a while ago um, in that it was the casing for uh, like a, a detergent capsule that you would put in the dishwasher. So it was a little pod. Um, so lactide was almost like almost like a plastic film. Um, and the advantage of this is that the lactide is completely water soluble and fully compostable. So when you put it into the washing machine, the dishwasher, um, the outside casing dissolves and the detergent, the soap inside is released. So um, that's obviously a massive advantage for that kind of material. Um, it also has um, a lot of applications in uh, medicine that it's going to quite happily, um, you know, be dissolved into the body um, over a certain amount of time, uh, depending on how it's engineered. So it can have lots of applications with casings on uh, medication and all different types of things, because sometimes you don't want things to be hanging around in the body for a long time. It might be that you place something in there to hold a bone in place and you want it to break down and eventually completely disappear. So lactide's a good one to try and remember um, because it's water soluble. That kind of makes it stand out from the rest of the pack. Right, this one. Um, is called uh, glycolide, um, sometimes called ecofilm or lactel. Ecofilm is a good one to try and remember. Um, this is basically an alternative to something like cling film made from low density polyethylene. Um, ecofilm is um, made from uh, cellulose, which is plant based, um, and a bit of PLA, so polylactic acid as well. It's fully compostable. So quite often it's used for ground sheets um, in farming to be put over plants to protect them. Um, but because it's fully compostable, it's going to eventually break down and completely disappear without causing any damage to the environment, damage to the plants uh, or any pollution. So it's a really good alternative to uh, cling film and different types of packaging um, wraps like films, because quite often they're not easily recycled. So that's also a really good one to try and remember. So those are the main types of natural biopolymers and synthetic biopolymers that you need to have an awareness of. And here's a question, something that potentially could come up in the exam. So imagine this is the question you get in the exam. Evaluate the negative environmental implications of using biopolymers and biodegradable polymers. So. What kind of things could you talk about? You may want to pause at this point. You might want to try and have a go at answering this question. Um, I'm going to take you through so a couple of points that I would say would get you the marks for this question. First one being um, biodegradable polymers, because they are still coming from crude oil sources. When they are decomposing or breaking down, they can still produce methane gas which is um, obviously going to cause global warming um, and is a harmful uh, chemical that's being given off. OK, so because it's remember, this is biodegradable polymers. These are the ones that they're kind of tricking you slightly with, making you think they're more environmentally friendly when actually they are just crude oil plastics in disguise um, with an additive that makes them break down quicker. So they can still produce um, harmful gases uh, in landfill. Um, biodegradable uh, polymers can take high temperatures to decompose and they may leave behind toxic residues. So like I said, it's not going to completely disappear and be happily eaten by bugs and worms and bacteria in the soil. This is still uh, a plastic that those kinds of things they, they don't want to eat. So 
um, they can leave behind things that are, are toxic. Um, uh, a big issue with flipping from completely crude oil plastics to natural biopolymers is that quite often, well, you need huge amounts of land to grow the crops. Um, and some quite often they are genetically modified. So you need to you need to take that into account because a lot of the uh, the rainforest is being cleared to grow uh, things like, um, you know, biofuels and things like that. So, you know, ecosystems can be destroyed because uh, land is being cleared to grow um, the crops needed to produce these biopolymers. Um, so there needs to be a balance because this can cause a lot of damage to ecosystems and to wildlife. Um, biopolymers and biodegradable polymers um, can't be recycled. So uh, specifically biopolymers like PLA um, and potato pack and starch, uh, cornstarch polymers, um, they can't be recycled because they naturally break down. <clears throat> so in a way that could encourage more of a throwaway culture, less of a we need to keep uh, materials being used constantly in kind of like a, um, a cradle to cradle approach where you're going around in a, in a bit of a circle to making sure that materials are being used to their fullest amount um, ra and, and more to a cradle to grave approach again, where things are having to be harvested, made into the product, disposed of and then harvested again. Yes, it's coming from uh, not a finite resource, but um, it's it's still a resource that is being used and that has uh, an impact. So it could encourage people to um, take on a more of a throwaway culture um, to these products. Um, and there is an issue, like I spoke about earlier, um, that the terms biopolymer and biodegradable polymer, they have different meanings, which confuses me, confuses you guys, I'm sure, and will confuse the general public. So it can make it harder for people to make a positive environmental choice because you think you're making a better choice buying PG tips that has biodegradable um, tea bags, but they're still coming from crude oil. They're still, um, you know, still coming from a finite resource. So making a, um, a sustainable choice can be quite difficult because companies are obviously trying to promote that they are sustainable. So they will highlight things like this is biodegradable and this is compostable, but you need to be a little bit more savvy about it and make sure that it is coming from a renewable source in the first place. So that's probably more marks than six marks. I would say that's probably more like an eight mark uh, kind of answer, but this is something that could potentially come up. So make sure you would be um, ready for this kind of question. And also having a couple of examples in there to throw in there um, would also be beneficial. Um, so hope that was useful. Um, that's the end of the video on um, biodegradable polymers and biopolymers. See you on the next one.